Hi, and welcome back to uh, episode 22 of Calculator Programming with Tim. Um, I'm going to show you guys something really interesting here, and I have not programmed this for a while. I've programmed it in the past, and here's proof. So, um, I might show you the code, or I might just show it to you. So let's go ahead and just execute it. Now, let's zoom out a little bit so you can actually watch me so I can prove to you that I know how to do this. So, the way this works is you select a level and you can select between I think like 3 and 9 or 1 and 9. Uh, actually 1 should work. So if I just select level 1, what it does is it creates a game of Towers of Hanoi for me. So I go ahead and press enter and it starts the game. So the goal is to get this one over to either this spot or this spot. So I go ahead and I press the, the second button and it selects the one. And then you can see I'm pressing right and left here. So I press right and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna just drop off the one here. So I'm gonna press the second key again and it drops it off. So then I win the game. So it took me one move and the minimum number of moves you can beat this game in is one. So that was pretty easy. Let's go ahead and see about two. So let's see, I can move the tower here or here. Let's let's go ahead and choose uh, one of these spots, or maybe it doesn't matter. So let's just go ahead and put the one here and put the two. Now if I press left, it'll actually wrap around to that side. So I can drop the two there and I can put the one on top. And look, it, I won and it took me three moves. So let's go ahead and do level, uh, let's do level six. Okay, so there's six, so I'm going to move this tower right here. Now, I'm going to prove to you that I know how to that I know how to play this game. So I'm going to select the one, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to select the two, I'm going to put it here. I'm going to select the one, put it on the two, and I'm going to put the three over here on the right. I'm going to take the one, put it there. I'm going to take the two, put it on the three, and I'm going to take the one, put it on the two. Then I'm going to take the four, and I'm going to put it here, and I'm going to put the one on it. And I'm going to take the two, and I'm going to put it on a five, put the one on it, put the three on the four, and... Well, everything's pretty easy. You put the two on the three, put the one on the two. Then I'm gonna select the five, put it there. Oh, I moved the wrong way. Oh well, I did one extra move. I'm gonna take the one, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna take the two, I'm gonna put it here. I'm gonna take the one, I'm gonna put it there. I'm gonna put the three there. Take one there, put the two right here, one on there. Put the four and the five. I'm gonna put the one there because I know it goes there. I'm gonna put two there and the one there, and well, I'm just gonna keep going because I know actually exactly what I'm doing, even though I sort of made a mistake there. But um, it was just a one move mistake. It wasn't like I made a, I started stacking something in the wrong spot kind of mistake. So there we go. We got the. Three stacked up there. I'm gonna go ahead and put the one there and the two there. And it's funny because I'm actually not looking at my calculator right now. I'm looking at the recording screen as I play. I'm looking directly at uh, what you <laughs> what what's being recorded. Um. Oh, I moved it the wrong way again. It's okay, that only counts as one move though. So it's not like I made that big of a mistake. So I'm two moves behind, but I, I still would uh, argue that I have not stacked anything in the wrong place yet. And let's go ahead and put the four there, and the one here, and the two here, and the one there, the three on the four, the one here, two there, and the one right there. Oh, guess what? I did do it in the minimum number of moves. Huh. So, I forgot about this, but it doesn't count how many times I move my cursor. It just counts how many times I've moved an object. So, actually, I did that perfectly. And I I guess I've proven it to you. Um, I can do nine. Um, but I don't want to take up so much time. And I'll explain how um, I know how to do this really quickly, if you're interested in. The reason why I know how to do this is because I actually 
um, looked at a computer program a long time ago, like maybe 10 plus years ago. And when I saw it, I realized how the game worked. And it was very, very simple to me for some reason. But um, anyway, you have these three spots. And you start off with some kind of... The, the way the game works is you just want to get your your tower moved. And you can only put smaller on top of bigger. So you can represent that with like different size blocks or something like that. So the way the game is solved is actually really simple as you just define a problem and so we we just call this problem we'll just call it the problem and we're gonna call this problem we're just gonna call it P because the problem is it needs like a name because part of solving the problem is solving the same problem again just a little differently a little bit smaller so when we solve the problem P, we're going to say that our starting problem P is moving this blob, I guess, right here. Or we could move it to the middle, it doesn't matter, but we'll say we're moving it right here. So part of solving problem P, or the way we solve that problem, so I'm going to define exactly how to solve that problem. And then you should, if you pay, if you believe everything that I say literally, then you'll know exactly how to solve this without me explaining anything else. So part of solving that is three steps. This is step one. And you use P. Step one is to do P again, is to, to, to solve our problem again on these three, and then to move them here. Step two, it's just one move. It's the move of this bottom piece. Okay, step two is one move. Then, there's gonna be a stack of three here. I kind of drew it small, but we're, we're gonna have to move that back on top of that piece that we moved, and that's going to be step three. And how do we move those? Well, we move them. We move those three pieces using P again. So what's P? Well, I just described it to you. So this is what's called an inductive problem. So um, basically, this isn't just three. This is some number. It could be n. Just call it n. Or we'll call this n minus 1, and this is n. And that's how you solve it. But what? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it, Tim. If you follow it exactly, you'll realize that actually finishing this problem, this sub-problem, involves doing this problem again, and you're going to have a lot of problems kind of lined up for you to finish. By the time you finish all of them, you'll complete the puzzle, but it'll take a lot of thinking. It'll take a lot of memory to kind of figure it out and to figure out what's going on. Um, but that's how you do it. You solve it just by um, inductively setting up these problems for yourself. So that's how the, that's how the program works. Um, the program that solves it, that is. But the program that I made here actually doesn't, doesn't play the game for you. It lets you play the game. So that's Towers of Hanoi. I kind of introduced it for you. I'm not really programming it right now. Uh, I should go to H, which is Hanoi. But I'm going to show you a couple things. So this first, uh, just ignore this first line. Um, this first line was actually a special line that I was using to interconnect multiple programs together a long time ago. Um, but I'm not using it right now. It, it just, it checks for some variable that I set in my calculator to see if the, if I ran the program or if this extra special, you know, quote unquote, uh, index program ran it instead and therefore it can I can custom run this program however I want but it was just a silly idea it's not it's not anything special 
Um, so we can just kind of ignore it. But there are a couple uh, important variables that show up kind of down here really quick. So we go ahead and uh, we clear the screen. I want to figure out how this works because uh, it's interesting to me now. We got while one if j equals zero. I don't know what j means yet, but we need to figure out what j means. A is our level. Uh, let's go see. It looks like R is what button we pressed. Um, and J, somehow we we stored into A. Not sure why. Um, not sure what that's all about. Clear home. D's want A. Okay. So that this one varies by the the does it vary by the the y value? So this kind of tells you how many how high to draw something. Right. So this tells you this is the initializing of the first stack. Okay, and then here we should have our kind of like editing part of the uh, of the program. So I'm not programming this right this instant, and you're probably angry with me. Why are you showing us this program that you already made? Well, it's because I made it a long time ago, and I do want to possibly program it again. Um. But right now, I guess it's just an intro. Um, so you know what? I will label this episode as an intro, and I actually um, might not do much coding. Well, I guess I guess I could do some coding. I, d I don't think it would be fair unless I told you at the very beginning of the episode that we're not going to code today um, to not do some coding. So maybe we should do some coding. Um, so the number of moves, by the way, that it takes is whatever number height there is. So let's say there's five. Okay, then it's two to the fifth minus one. So that would be 31 moves to do five. Five blocks in the Towers of Hanoi. Um, should we program another Towers of Hanoi? Well, I did that with Snake. I had a Snake, and then I made a Snake 2 for a recording. So... Should I do another Towers of Hanoi? Maybe. Um, we'll call it Hanoi 2, just because we did a snake too, so. Thank goodness that the length of the title isn't too long, so we can keep with keep that same standard. And, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and... Let's just go ahead and try, uh... Let's just, let's just program it. Might as well. This is not a big deal. Um, yeah, we can we can program it. Uh, or what we could do is we could program we could make a program that actually solves it, and I could do that using uh, an inductive program. You, by using programs that call other programs that would help a lot with this the memory part with the stack it would make it a lot simpler on my brain on how how to actually code it on the calculator there's other ways to do it but it would get a little messy I think and I'd have to create a data structure that uses a, a list to basically keep track of what what steps were on and things like that and it would be kind of silly um, but if we have a program that calls another program, what it does is, is you know, just because of where the program called itself, when it get when it returns, it knows where it was. So therefore, that that makes things easier. And so we would have to do that manually. We'd have to make some kind of list to do that manually if we did that. It's called a um, imperative. Uh, programming. I, I guess it's non-recursive. I guess it's uh, manu manual recursion or something like that. I don't know what you'd call it, but it's basically uh, 
it's basically trying to do recursion without actually using uh, built-in recursion, but without using recursion at the language level, which I do not recommend unless you don't know how to do it and you just want to practice and learn. So I would only recommend it as an educational thing not to do um, in practice unless there's a very unless you can prove unless you unless you know that it it's it's actually better but it's but i i uh i would say that it's it, it it's not and if it is it probably shouldn't be uh there should be a way to make it so that it is better to man and easier to manage and easier to to make sure that it doesn't crash or anything at the language level so and there's certain languages that are very good at doing that. But I'm just talking, so why don't we code something? Um, let's just go. Let's just let's just go ahead and start uh, clearing the screen. So I might uh, try to remember where uh, when I started this, or when I started the coding part, and probably just put a link. So let's just clear the screen. Um, Hmm. <laughs> Not sure what we're gonna do here. Let's just let's just make our height five, and let's store it as h for height. Let's just say our height is uh, the total height of the tower, the total number of pieces. Um. And then let's go ahead and. We could make another program that, uh, you know what, instead of making it, instead of making a game, let's go ahead, I know I'm changing, well, I'm still doing the video on Towers of Hanoi, but let, why don't we make the computer solve it? Because that would be very cool. We should do that, actually. We actually, we should do that. I would actually like it if we did that, that would be really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That would be pretty cool. Let's let's do that. Why why don't we? Why don't we do that? Let's let's do a special thing. So we're gonna use a program called Hanoi R. I think when we solve it. So let's let's go ahead and store a list. We might not even need to store information about the towers. We might be able to just show like a, a little movie type thing, showing it solve the Hanoi Towers automatically. Let's do that. So to start off, so we're going to do this the problem that I described. And we might not even need to store these towers, we might just have, since the computer already knows how to solve it, we might just start with some number and then the computer will just kind of move the numbers around accordingly. Um, and when it moves the numbers around, it's always going to move one number at a time when it actually moves something. So we do need to start off by printing the whole, the whole tower. So let's go ahead and print the tower. So let's Let's say we start, let's see, there's 16 rows. So the middle of kind of row is, I don't know, row eight, or I mean columns, I'm sorry. It's either column seven or column eight. Are the, the two, I think those are the two middles. So let's go ahead and get some water really quick. Okay, so we're, let's just start off with the fifth column because it's two to the left and it's going to be five high. So it's going to be the fifth column, it's going to be five tall.
So we're gonna out. We're gonna go for. <coughs> For A is 1 to H, we're going to output our Y value, which is going to be 8 minus H, right? No, 9 minus H. No, 9 minus A. So, okay, so I think it's 9. 9 minus, 9 minus A? We'll just try that. 9 minus A. And then 5. And then A. It doesn't seem like water is making my throat much better. It's a bit. Why? I thought the one would be on top. Why? What am I thinking? Why isn't the one on top? Nine minus a. So the one should be. Oh, the right. The one would be on the bottom. So what am I? So I think it's. Well, I'm going to have to add A, but I'm going to do minus H, 8 minus H plus A. There we go. Okay. Sorry. So that's what we start off with. So our H is 5, so therefore we should determine that our starting position, you know, is going to be there. And we should know that the program should be able to tell to put a space here and then to move the one wherever the end is. So let's say the end isn't like, let's say the end is on the right. So the, the program should, f the first thing the program does as far as moving pieces is it's gonna put the one here. The first thing it thinks is, oh, how am I gonna move the five over here? Well, then it, I'm gonna put the four, I'm gonna put the five here and then the four here and blah, 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 blah. It's gonna figure out everything it does. And the final thing that it figures out before it moves something is that it needs to put the one over here. That's the final thing it figures out, and then it actually moves. And then from there, it continues solving all the problems until the uh, all the move all the pieces are on the right side at the very end. And it continues not only creating more problems as it goes, but it's solving problems as it goes too. So we're gonna make a new program called Hanoi R. And that's going to be the recursive kind of Hanoi solver thing, and we're gonna we're gonna have these variables that are set up for it for it to use, and depending on what those variables say, that's what what it does. So it could be tr so. The first time this is called, there should be some number that says five. There should be some like n. We're, we'll say n. N is 5. Okay, so this is going to start off with N. And what this does is it's going to call... It's going to do three steps, and it's going to call it with N minus 1. And then it's going to call it with... Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do N minus 1 stores N. And then I'm just going to... This is, this is literally... This is what you do. This is what you do. You call it again. You call it makes its call itself. So if you've not programmed much before, this is what recursion is. And then I'm gonna call it like no joke. I'm gonna call it again with n minus one. Now there's there's more variables that I have to set, but the that literally will be n, n minus. Actually, I don't even need to minus. Well, wait. Hmm. 
No, I the problem doesn't go back. It doesn't return until it's finished. So actually, I only need to subtract n from it once. So we're gonna call it twice. But um, there's three variables, and they're gonna rep or there's a variable that's gonna represent w what our starting and ending positions are. So two variables, and they're gonna have three states. And uh, yeah. Or we could use one variable in three states or something like that, but because technically there's less information represented there. But to make it simpler, we might just use two variables. And Anyway, there's only so many possibilities. We could be moving from position one to three or from one to two or from two to three. And I guess there's six possibilities. So as long as we can represent six different states somehow, then uh, that, that'll work. Uh, for telling us where we're going to move to. And then n will tell us how many pieces. So that's literally all we need. We just need to know how many pieces and from what position to what position we're moving from. And uh, there's one last thing we do technically need to know. Uh, but, this isn't, but this is for... Because we need to know how many pieces there are total, just because we need to know how high that one is when we're moving it around. To, if we get the height wrong, obviously it won't work. So if this is the program that's actually also doing the drawing, not just the moving, it also needs to draw it properly. It needs to know how high it is. So technically, um, H, we can't. We just can't mess up H. This is all that means. So we, we know what N is. We need to know what H is, which we do, because we are not going to change it. And then we just need to know from what to what. And that's it. And then from here, we just need to figure out how we do that, and then we do that. So we're calling this twice. But the second, but the in, in between here, we're going to move. St there's also a step two where we just move that bottom piece. So let's think about how we're going to represent. Oh, let's, let's think about this. So let's go ahead and go to, to Hanoi 2 again. So let's go ahead to 4, 8. A is 1 to H. Output 8 minus blah, blah, blah. Okay, we instantiate it. Um, and then we want to call, we want to say n equals, so we're going to store 5 into n. Okay. That's all we have to do. All we have to do is set up, that, that's not the only thing we have to do, is what I'm saying. We're not done yet, but all we have to do is call it, and then we'll pretty much, we'll be done. So, no, wait, R. Um, so the last thing we have to do, we have two more things to do. We have to set up the state. So we have to we have to tell it which where we're moving, f what to what to what, and then we have to edit the other uh, thing again just to draw um, our our middle move, our final our our last move. Um, there is something. Uh, Keep making it sound easier than it actually is, but technically, oops, sorry about that. Don't want to execute. I want to edit. Okay, so in here, technically, there's one other thing we have to do. Um, that is, uh, when we're done with this, we also have to we have to increment n again to make it what it was, um, but we also have to not do these two things if n is zero. So if if n is greater than zero, and I'm going to put thens because it's not just that one step we're going to skip. It's also whatever we set the parameters for that step. Um, now n being n is going to be less than one, which is okay, but we don't want to set the other parameters because it's it's kind of pointless too. Uh, they don't, we don't need to know what the other ones are. It's maybe we'll s hmm. we might. We might have. Hmm. 
Not sure what. Well, the problem is, is that if we set them, we'll have to revert them when we're done, which is okay. Um, we should probably actually do that. Uh, so if we're going to do that, we might as well just do it at the top and yeah, you know what? We're going to pretty much do it every time because we're going to undo it at the end anyway. Yes. So we only do, we only recursively do them if n is greater than zero, because if there's, if there's no mo pieces to move, then we can't, if we're only moving one piece, we can't, um, we can't move less than one piece. That doesn't make any sense. So anyway, the code in, in the middle here will move one piece. How do we, let's, let me think about this for a second, um, on paper. So we have six states or six possibilities. So we have, and then we kind of have these possible, um, I guess, nodes or something. So if you have three positions, for each position you have two uh, possible moves. So it, let's say you start position one, move A would be to move to two, and move B would be move from one to three. So there's multiple ways we could represent this. One way we could represent this is just using two variables. Um, so if you have variable uh, start and then end, so the start could be two and then the end could be three, and you just, you can't have them both the same. So it would be, it'd be something like that. So, and then I, I suppose you could have like an, an intermediate, which would be like the, uh, the other one. Um, so that in this case, if you're moving from two to three, then your intermediate kind of area would be a one. And then what you could do in the, I think that this might actually be the easiest way to, to do it because, um, it's it might be the easiest way to swap them accordingly so for each step all it is is swapping two of these um, so you have you always have this start intermediate and end variable and then you just you just swap them according to what you need to do is the way it works so we might as well just go with that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and think about how we're going to do this. So let's say, so let's let's draw that again. So let's say we start at one, and we need to go to three. Okay, so we start at we're going from one to three. Well, there's three steps to that. Okay, and this is going to be n. This is going to be n minus one. This is going to just be a one move step, and this is going to be an n minus one step. Okay? And this is the actual move. The other ones are not moves, they're just recursion. Okay, so to move one to three, you need to move everything in between from one to two. And then you need to move everything from two to three. So it seems like you need to to move from to get from start to end you need to go from start to intermediate and then intermediate to end and in between you actually do your move and what is the actual move while you're moving the bottom piece so it's moving start to to end. So here we're moving one to three. So here we're moving one piece from start to end. Okay? So it looks like that's how it's going to work. So let's just, we might as well use those variables. We might as well use S, I, and R 
for those things. Okay, so, and then we're going to use a T for a temporary value. So let's just go ahead and do that. Um, so to, we're going to, we want to change it so that we move from S to I. And so how do we move S to I instead of S to E? We need to switch the E and the I. So here we're going to say E store is temporary and uh, temporary store as I and I store as E. So here we go, we switched, switched E and I. Now, if I and E are switched, then when we actually move our piece, we're just going to move it to the I, because they're switched, remember. But at the end, or before we, f before we actually move on to the next recursion, uh, we want... We want to be moving, instead of from S to I, we want to be moving from I to E. So we actually want our, our old I to, to old E, remember. Um, so, <laughs> so this is kind of confusing. But uh, hold on. So let's look at the numbers again, because the numbers always, the numbers will stay the same and the S is the E's. Well, we'll let's say they change. So when we start, we're going from uh, let's. How do we do this? We're we're gonna have three variables: s, i, and e. Okay. When we start, we're going from one to three using two. And then when we swap i and e, we're going to go 1 to 3 using 2, 1 to 2 using 3, sorry. And that's what we give this command. Okay. But when we move 1 to 3, we want to go s to i. So current, so our current S to I is what we're using, but then we want to move from two to three again recursively. So where's two and three? Well, currently our two is our end and our three is our I. So we, if we want to, if we want to really do this step right here using our current variables, we want we wanted two to be our start, three to be our end, and one to be our intermediate. So how does that work? Well, E gets put there. I gets put there and S gets put there apparently. Apparently that's how it works. Two gets put there, three gets put there, and S put gets put there. So let's go ahead and and do that. So for here, our new S is gonna be whatever E is currently. So E stores S. Um, and let's save S into temporary, because we're going to use that in a second. And then uh, I store is E, because I is going to be the new, E is going to be whatever I was. And then, and I'm looking at the paper here to, to make sure that I'm doing this right. S is going to store into I, so we're going to use T because we stored a temporary. Okay, so that's how you swap it. Um, and then only if n is greater than zero do we call this one. And then when we're done, we increment n again and we return. But before we return, we have to swap everything back because when we're done, we're, we're done. Like we want to put everything back how it was and we keep having, we keep having to shift everything back exactly how it was. So how do we, how do we put everything back to what it was at the beginning? Well, we want one, two, three again, right? So 
it looks like 3 is already in the right spot. So we just need to swap S and I now because we already had the end correctly set. So now we just need to switch S and I and, and then we're good. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. So S stores T and uh, uh, I stores S and then T store is I. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually doing manual um, recursion here. I'm doing it, I'm kind of simulating um, a lot of the variable passing in recursion. Usually in programming languages, they, they support this for you. You don't have to kind of do all these switches and stuff yourself because you're not using these global variables. You're actually, you're actually making new variables and passing them in and things like that. But I'm actually swapping them. And you could still think of it as it's a variable that I passed in and then I'm just doing some kind of special transformation on that variable and then when I return I just transform it you know again or transform it back or something but either way it's it's pretty similar it's it's basically uh, just recursion that I'm doing here so there we go um, Okay, now for the tricky part. This is the only part where, this is the only code that I'm going to insert right into here. This is the only code where we actually move something physically. Um, and by physically, I mean virtually. <laughs> uh, this is the only, this is the only part where we actually move a piece uh, on the screen. We don't do it anywhere. Everywhere else just figures out when and how we, in what with what variables we reach this piece of code right here. Uh, everything else just figures that out. And what we what we put right here is what actually draws the piece. So right now we know n, we know h, and we know s, i, and e, and that's all we're interested in. And what we're doing is we're moving a piece from s to i because right now i is set as our as our kind of what our end was but we switched them so it's weird but anyway we're moving all we have to do is he, here is move whatever number is at whatever number we're at we gotta we're gonna erase it based on what h is and then we're gonna draw whatever our number is based on what h is and what based on what n is and then we're going to um, and we're going to know where to draw any race based on what S and I are. So, um, so let's use the column numbers. So S, I, and E, we'll say, we'll say they they can be one of three numbers, which will be whatever whatever column we're in. What we can name them whatever we want, and let's actually. Let's actually use, instead of using 1, 2, and 3, let's actually use which column we're drawing it in. So we're just going to assume that it, it actually represents the column. Because remember, we don't have to do any math on them. We just have to swap them. So they can, they can be, they can be the actual, they can draw, they can represent what, what we're actually drawing. So we're going to, let's just go ahead and put a space. So we have to output a space. Uh... So I guess it's just two output commands. So we just have to, let's see, we have to output a space on column S, but how high? Uh, let's see, how high are we doing it? So this is tricky. Um, so if N, So depending on what n is, we have to subtract 8 and h from it. So if we're moving 1 and h is 5, then it needs to be the fifth one up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, so we need we need to get 4 from that from somehow by subtracting. Um, 8 is how high our screen is if we subtract 
How do we do this? If we subtract, um, hold on, let me think. We need to put a space how high it is, so we need to get four. So if we take eight and we subtract five, we get three. Uh, hold on a second. Let me let me draw this really quick. So if h is five. This is it. I'm going to write our little function for what our y value is here. Hold on. So if h is 5 and our n is 1, then we should be using a 4 for the output. Uh, but if our n is 2, it should be down 1, so it should be a 5. Right? But if our h is 4, and our n is 1, and our h is 4, and our n is 2, uh, then we should get, then it should be shorter by 1, so o should be bigger. So it should be 5 and 6. So it looks like we're subtracting this and we're adding this. So how do we do this? We take 8 minus h, which is 3, and then plus n. 8 minus h plus n. And I believe should work. Does that does that represent this? So eight minus four is four. No, eight. I'm sorry. Eight minus four, yeah, eight minus four is four. Plus two is six. Eight minus four is four. Plus one is five. Yes. So 8 minus h plus n should be the height. No! I know what I did wrong. Okay. Um, sorry, I did mess up. Uh, I thought that we could represent all the information of how high we are with just h. No, that's not true. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Because of the nature of the problem being broken up into different pieces and us solving, even though n could be some number and moving from one place to another could be other numbers, that doesn't tell us the height at the current state of the uh, puzzle. So we actually need to represent that by multiple different numbers. So let's go ahead and use, uh, let's just use J, K, and L. Let's, let's do that, J, K, and uh, L. But the nice thing about this is we don't have to edit it anywhere except for this, except for this, little part right here. That's the only place where we need to move those, where we need to change those numbers. It's literally, it's the only place uh, we need to change them. But the problem is we do need to, we do need to know which one is being changed. So we will need to edit, uh, we will need to know whether, what column we're on and change those numbers accordingly. So let's just go, let's assume that uh, depending on where we're at, um, we will need to know one, two, or three. So let's say our x value is, did I say it was seven, five, I said it was five, five, seven, and not five, seven, and nine. Seven and nine. Yeah, we'll just say it's five. It's represented by f columns five, seven, and nine. And if we want to change that, we can change that later. So let's just uh, 
we'll change that if we need to, um, if it's not centered. But yeah, we will need to actually know where our columns are because we need to keep track of how many are in each column. So here we're going to say, <sighs> well, H is going to be, okay, so our new H is going to be whatever J, K, or L, R. So, yes. So, if... Hmm. Um, if a, if our, if our, we're moving, which is S, if S, this is where we're moving from, if S equals five, five, then we're just going to take whatever is in J and store it as H. And then if, s equals 7, then we're going to take k and store it in h. Oh, not h, I'm sorry. We need a variable that represents the height at that current state, but we don't want to change the entire, in case we use h later, because h represents a global thing for the whole problem. So we're going to use m to represent the, the height of the current stack that we're looking at. And that's all it's going to represent. So here, if it's column 9, then jkl. So we're going to use l. OK, so here we're going to output um, the height, which is going to be 8 minus m plus n. That's the thing that we just figured out, except we switched h to m. Okay. And then s is going to be our column. And then we're going to output a space. That's it. That's putting the space. Okay. Now we're going to copy, we're going to do the same code again. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to do it with i. So if i equals 5, then we're going to do this whole thing again. Uh, J stores M. If I equals 7, then it's K stores M. If I equals 9, then L stores M, and then we're going to output the same thing again, 8 minus M plus N. Now, that's not going to be the only thing, because we actually need to increment J, K, and L, but the only times we have to do that is here. The only other times we have to touch these is when we start the problem, when we instantiate the, the start. That's it. So 8 minus m plus n, and then um, I know the height is supposed to be, or the, sorry, that's the height. I know the, 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 uh, where it is laterally supposed to be i, but what do we print? We need to print the number. that it's at, we need to print n. Because n represents our, um, oh, okay, so the reason why I'm using j, k, and l, so we actually could do this entire thing only using h, but the, pr the, the difference is, is that the one will just always be kind of floating here at the top where it started. 
And so it like the whole puzzle will work, but it will kind of looks a little silly because like usually when you stack things like it's just as high as however many things there are. So if the one's just like sitting by itself or if it's like there's numbers missing, there would be gaps. So this kind of using these just it gets I guess it just gets rid of those gaps. Like it keeps track of how many sh are total in its stack. That's all it does. That's all I'm doing here with these with this JK and L. I'm just keeping track how many are total in a stack. Um, um, ch -ch -ch. So for here I'm gonna say then and here since I'm drawing it um, I'm adding to the height, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna j plus one stores j before I even store it into m because I'm already adding. I'm just gonna add to the height before it it, it does that. So here we go. K plus one stores k, and then uh, l plus one stores l. And then up here, we're going to subtract after uh, afterwards because we're removing, when we remove it, we're removing based on the height of what it was because we're deleting something, we're not adding something. So, so we're going to subtract one from J after we, after we, we select where we need to delete. So, so let's subtract one from K, and then we need to subtract one from from L. There we go. Okay, so those will keep track of how many are in each in each stack, and it should. That should work, then. Um, wow. Um, okay, let's let's go back and we need to set it up properly. So let's go to Hanoi two, and we need to set we need to set those variables up correctly. So we're gonna go ahead and. Before we call this, we need to set their heights. So five is going to be n, right? Because there's five. Uh, no, no, h. I don't. I, I'm going to try to keep h as a variable. So it's okay that we use five here because f this five is a hard code five. That's the column number. But for how tall our thing is, that's going to n is going to depend on whatever h is. So um, we're going to store n into our first column and that's height is going to be is going to be j but 0 is going to be the height of k at the start and 0 is going to be the height of l at the start um, so let's I'm not sure if this is going to work okay we have a domain error okay let's let's check what our our letters are here. So we have 8 minus M plus N, we have I and we have N. So what's what's our I? What's our N? Our I doesn't work or doesn't make sense. What what's this our Our I should be Our I should be either be the number set five, seven or nine. So that doesn't make any sense oh because we didn't set it properly okay right I forgot to set the s that's very important um, totally forgot about that so let's see so our start so our s is 5 and our end or 7 is our intermediate and then 9 is our end 
that's so let's go ahead and run Honoi 2. Let's I'm not sure if that'll work. Looks like there were some zeros, which is not good. There should not be any zeros anywhere. Um, M, N, I, and N. M, N, I, and N. A, Y, S, M, M, O, S, N. Hmm. Uh, this is a it's a problem here. M should not be. What is M representing? M is representing our height, and it got it from I, didn't it? Um, hold on a second. What is eight? So if M, M represents, M is whatever the height of the stack is. Wait, 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 hold on a second, how? So if the height Height is oh I shouldn't be adding n because if I know what the height is um right the height that would be the height of the entire thing okay so I shouldn't be adding n because n would give us the height according to the global height we actually don't even need n there I don't know why I think it's because when I tr converted from not from using h to using j k and l I forgot I didn't realize that I no longer should be using this plus n because it actually doesn't it doesn't make any sense to use it there right okay good good thing I recognize that the best debugging is when okay it... okay <laughs> okay <laughs> it 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 okay it kind of solved something but then it printed out a seven at the end um, it looks like it solved it one block too too high, and then it, it also solved it using a zero, which is kind of silly. Why is it using a zero? Um, I think I know why. Hold on, let's let's go to H. I think it's because. I think it's because this H should be one more. So whatever, okay, so whatever I'm passing in, since I'm subtracting one at the beginning of the recursion algorithm, then I should be using, so I should be passing in a six, not a five, maybe. Maybe? Okay. Not sure what just happened there. That should be only one thirty-one moves. Not sixty-three. If that was sixty-three moves, then something's wrong. Um, <laughs> uh, let's use like a variable that we never used before. So like zero store z, and then and <laughs> and Hanoi recursion. Let's go ahead and. Let's say every time we uh, every time we delete those, <laughs> what am I doing? Uh, let's just let's just do it at the start. Let's actually do it at the very beginning. So because I know I'm erasing and I'm drawing in each of these iterations. So, no matter what, so... This will count how many actual draws we have if we just count them up in total. So, yeah. let's. I don't know where that 7 is getting printed from. That's kind of silly. 
Why am I getting a 7? Anyway, let's look at that. Do, do, do. Is it going to say 31 or is it going to say 63? It says 63. Okay. <laughs> well, I know what I want to do. I want to get rid of this plus one because that's not going to solve anything, I don't think. I think I'm. I was fixing that the wrong way. So. I'm doing something wrong in here. So we should actually keep it what it was. Um, oh! If n... n is the one we're, we're moving. Right? So if I'm saying, if n is greater than 0... Oh, n... no, 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 no. n is the one that we're being told to move. So, technically, these should be greater than 1s. You know what? No, n. Whatever I set to n to currently is going to be the one that we're going to move. So we're going to actually we're going to actually change n at the start, like we were, and we actually will. Let me go back to that because that means that this actually should be a plus one. So because it's still going to be so because I already solved the problem the uh, the other way. So it is going to just go up to thirty one. Do, do, do. There we go. Okay, now for our last problem that we need to figure out, which is figuring out why in the world, why in the world is it is it doing that? <laughs> is it printing a little too a little too high up there? I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, maybe. I don't know what is going on. Let's let's. Is this supposed to be an eight or nine? Don't know. Okay, so it didn't delete the five. Which has me a little concerned because <clears throat> that means I think we're we're not deleting. We're doing something there, that five should be gone if we moved it. Yeah, why is there two threes there? This doesn't make sense. Well, that looks better, but okay. Why are there two fives? Okay, if it's just moving the five, then it should have deleted it first and then drew the next one. Yeah, there shouldn't be two. <laughs> there should not be two fives like that. That is weird. What is going on here? This is this is strange range if 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 a, a piece moves okay time to do something that I didn't necessarily want to do but it'll make things interesting so I'm gonna I'm just gonna put a break in here um, I'm just gonna put a break after each After it erases and, I guess after both it erases and draws, maybe? Yeah, let's do that. Let's.
let's do that. No, we'll just pause. There we go. Hanoi 2. Okay, there we go. Uh... Draws the three. I think it. I think because I, I. I think it just erased. Okay. Okay, so it just drew. Just erased. So the first thing it, it should do, <clears throat> the very first time it does anything, is it erases. And then it pauses. So bam, like, right now, it just erased something. It's supposed to pause after it erases that one. So when I press enter, that new one appears. Which is correct. Why did the old one not disappear? Well, I'm going to figure that out right now. Okay, so it erased. Let's... Let's stop it right there. That one should have disappeared. So what's J? J is five, that's correct. J tells you how many are in that row. So what's eight? What's nine minus J plus N? Because that's, that's five. Okay. Well, hold on, because if that's the fifth down, one, two, three, four, five, it should have erased something from this row. Right? Uh, let's, let's run that again. And let's go to our code. 9 minus M. So M should actually be... Oh, so it's 6. Well, why isn't M the same as what J was? Oh, because it we added 1. We subtracted 1 from it. That... It should not be 6, because we should not have added to it. Why is it 6? What do we do wrong here? J stores M and then J minus 1. So why is J 6? How did J get to be 6? That's weird. J should not be... should not be 6. There's no such thing as having 6 pieces. Where did I set it? Oh! Ha! That's why. <laughs> N was our starting position, and I was storing N into J, but N is actually not the number. N is 1 plus the number of pieces we need to move. Is That's what we're passing in. So, that hopefully should work. Disappear, appear, disappear, appear, disappear, appear, appear. Okay, so now I, every time I press enter, we move a piece. Nice. Okay, let's uh, let's go down here and delete these pauses. So we'll delete that one, and we'll delete that one. Let's run it. Okay. Looks like it works in 31. Now we're going to try something crazy. We're going to change H to 6, and we're going to see if this works. Oh, my goodness. What just happened? That, my friend, was awesome. Um, we're going to try it with 7. 
Oh, and by the way, before I said I could solve it with nine pieces, I actually meant eight. I've solved it with nine, but not on the calculator, because obviously the calculator is only eight high, and I just realized that. There we go. 127, and finally, we're just having fun now. Let's see if this eight works. There we go. Let's see you do it. Let's see you do it, computer. Come on. Come on, calculator. Move them all. Move them all. There we go. And move that eight over. There we go. And it's halfway done. Let's keep going. Keep going. And that takes a lot of moves, by the way. Just saying. Mm. There we go. And the one was on top, but when it printed out 255 it it cleared it that's why you don't see the one so there we go we have made towers of Hanoi automated and we did it all in one episode i wasn't even sure if i was i didn't even know i was going to code that and i think that's actually the first time i've made that particular one on the calculator so now we have a manual Hanoi and we have automatic Hanoi and then the automatic uses the recur the recursion program right there so there we go, we have Towers of Hanoi. I believe I'm going to, when I go on uh, Pastebin, not only will I give you this, uh, these two programs right here, but why don't I go ahead and give you that Hanoi program right there? Even though you might not understand it because it's got that extra, you know, silly, you know, programming code to it, but I might as well just give that to you as well so that you can look at it since I've shown it. So uh, might as well just kind of include all of them. And uh, even though I didn't code this one on camera, um, you can look at the code. You saw how it worked. And uh, it was still fun. It was fun to make this one. So there we go. I believe that's it for episode 22. These have been fun. And by the way, uh, I did re rename episodes 17.0.1.2.3. Those were the chess episodes. I renamed, I just changed them to episode 17 through 20. That way it's just simpler. They're, they're about two hours each anyway, so might as well just make them individual episodes. I don't see why not. So anyway, there we go. Uh, that was fun. That was enjoyable. I'm glad I was able to actually figure it out. It took me a while, but glad it finally worked out. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. Um, it was fun. So that's about it. I didn't realize it, but I'm actually, I have been using my battery this whole time. Even though uh, my camera was plugged in, it actually wasn't plugged into the, the wall outlet. See you guys next time on uh, Calculator Programming with Tim. Bye.